Hi guys, it's Steffi from The Novelty Corner and welcome back to my channel and welcome to my best books of 2020. If you know me at all, you know that I cannot actually choose or order a top list of anything, especially books, because I read so many books and I love so many books and it's kind of impossible for me to narrow anything down. I read a total of 415 books in 2020, so what I decided to do this year is that I actually picked my top books for each month, as well as a selection of other books that I also really enjoyed, because why would I stop there? So essentially I have the best books of the month plus my special mentions, and this is going to be probably relatively long, so get yourself a cup of tea, I've got my peppermint tea right there, and strap in, we're gonna talk about some books. Kicking off with January, my favourite book from my reading in January was The Hating Game by Sally Thorne, which was the first time I'd ever read it. I know that a lot of people love this, I also know a lot of people don't really like it. It is a enemies to lovers office romance. It is written by Sally Thorne, who is an Australian author who I adore. Now, of course, in this, everything could have been solved by them actually talking and communicating with one another. And this is one of the few books where it didn't bother me terribly, because everything else that was happening in the story really kept me engaged and I especially loved the paintball scene and the scene that follows afterwards as well as Lucy standing up to Josh's father at the end of the book which were just highlights and I read this a few times in 2020. My special mention for January was Station Eleven by Emily St John Mandel which was a book that was chosen for me to read and I really enjoyed it. It is a dystopian literary fiction type story that I don't generally lean towards. In hindsight it was a little bit predictive of the way that 2020 went but at the same time it was a really enjoyable read and I'm glad I've read it because I know it is a very well-loved, very well-known book. In February my favourite book was The Lost Man by Jane Harper. This is one of her standalone books. If you are unfamiliar with Jane Harper she wrote The Dry which is a very popular Australian crime book. This is along similar lines. It is set in a very remote, very rural town I think in North Queensland or in the state of Queensland and it is really a family story as two brothers meet to find that their third brother has died and they don't really understand why because he lived and worked on the land so he was very familiar but it appears that he has died out in the middle of nowhere without any supplies. This is deeply atmospheric, it evokes for me all the feelings of whenever I travel to rural Australia and I adored it and I adore Jane Harper's work. I have two special mentions for February. The first one was My Darling Duke by Stacey Reed. This is a historical romance, it is a Beauty and the Beast-esque style retelling. And also Headliners by Lucy Parker which is book five in the London Celebrities series which is weird because I started it at book five but then I went back and reread all of the others so that's why I'm including it here. It is a contemporary hate to love romance set in London between two TV hosts who are rivals and suddenly they get thrown together and they have to resurrect this dying morning show and someone is sabotaging the success of this show behind the scenes. So this was really fun. In March I had two books that came out at the top of my list. The first is This Is How It Always Is by Laurie Frankel. This is a contemporary fiction story. It focuses on a family whose youngest son Claude loves to wear dresses and dreams of being a princess and when he grows up he tells his family that he wants to be a girl and it is how they cope with that, it is how everyone around them copes with it and it is honestly a beautiful heartwarming story. At times it is really hard to read because you have all of these people who are trying to come to grips with something that they did not expect at all, but Claude is absolutely precious and I adore this story. And I also picked Manage by Kristen Callahan because this was the year that I discovered Kristen Callahan and now I am kind of a tiny bit obsessed. Manage is the second book in the VIP series and the VIP series follows a band, but the second book actually follows the band's manager, Gabriel Scott, who is a bit of a hard ass. And he crosses paths with the heroine Sophie on a flight out to meet the band and at the time they don't really know each other and they do not know that Sophie is applying at, for a position as the social media manager for the group. This is a true grumpy sunshine romance read and I utterly adored it. My special mentions for March include To Hate Adam Connor by Ella Mays. This is a contemporary romance featuring a hate to love trope, it has a single dad and it is also a celebrity romance. I also wanted to include Jack of Hearts and Other Parts by Lev A.C. Rossen. This is a young adult queer 
story with a bit of mystery suspense thrown into it and also Strange Love by Anne Aguirre which is a science fiction romance story with a truly beautiful cinnamon roll of a hero. In April I had three favourites. There is The Year the Maps Change by Danielle Binks. This is a historical middle grade story set in Sorrento in Victoria which is the state that I live in and this follows Fred who has a very complicated family dynamic and she is just at that age where she is trying to find her place in the world and then her town begins to take in Kosovo Albanian refugees and she begins to learn what that means. Gorgeous, gorgeous story. I also loved Beach Read by Emily Henry. I know that there were sort of mixed reviews on this one. It is sort of a cross between a literary fiction romance story. It is about two rival authors who end up holidaying next to each other and they both are suffering from a bout of writer's block and so they decide to swap genres. One writes literary fiction, one writes romance and they swap their genres, they write in each other's genre and to help each other out they begin to go on these field trips to teach each other about how they gather information for their stories. They've got a little competition going to see whoever can publish their book first will be the winner of this competition. But it is a really delightful read. It is not your typical romance and I think that's what, what threw a lot of people off but still a really fun read. And I also couldn't not mention Romancing the Duke by Tessa Dare which was my first Tessa Dare book that I read and this was utterly delightful. The heroine of this story finds out that she has inherited a castle and when she goes to this castle she discovers that it's not quite uninhabited and she and the current resident need to find a way to live with each other. My special mentions for April included Reborn Yesterday by Tessa Dare which is a contemporary paranormal romance story featuring vampires and also The Surprising Power of a Good Dumpling by Wai Chim which is an Australian contemporary young adult story and deals a lot with mental health and family and it was a really really good read but it will tug at your heart a little bit. In May my favourite books were Well Met by Jen DeLuca. I've talked about this a lot this year. It is a contemporary romance story set at a Ren Fair and features a enemies to lovers trope that I utterly adore. I actually read this twice in 2020. Wolf Gone Wild by Juliet Cross which is a paranormal romance story featuring a witch and a werewolf shifter and the werewolf has a bit of a curse going on and he goes to the witch for help and it is utterly delightful. Evie and Matteo will become new favourite characters. It is very much a romantic comedy with supernatural creatures. My special mentions for May also included The Kingmaker and the Rebel King by Kennedy Ryan. This is a duet that has not only fantastic representation but is a really great slow burn romance story over time between two very strong characters and I really love this series and I will probably want to do a reread at some point because I want to unpack it a little bit more for myself. I also had to include The Duchess Deal by Tessa Dare as my special mention. This is another historical romance story and features a bit of a marriage of convenience and also The Worst Best Man by Mia Sosa which is a contemporary romance story about a woman who is left at the altar and then ends up having to work with the best man from her wedding. Oh boy I'm gonna have to get quicker at this otherwise this video is going to be so long. In June I had two favourites. I really enjoyed Boyfriend Material by Alexis Hall. This is a queer male male romance story. It is a fake dating story as well which was utterly delightful and I really loved Luke and Oliver as being very opposite characters who end up unintentionally falling for one another. I also couldn't not mention Rick by Alex Gino which is a queer middle grade story. Rick is beginning to question his sexuality and he's moving into middle school and of course this is a you know really tough time for him and suddenly he finds that the friends that he used to have may not necessarily be good choices in friends for him and that old friends who he had left behind might actually be a good source of support for him. So it is a really really great read. My special mentions for June include Red Sea Spies by Ruffy Berg. This is a non-fiction story about when Mossad was running a fake diving resort in order to smuggle Ethiopian Jews out of the Sudan. I also want to include A Rogue by Any Other Name by Sarah McLean which was the very first Sarah McLean book that I read and I fell in love with her writing and also Gifting Me to His Best Friend by Katie Robert which is part of her taboo series This Is A Menage. It features a couple with a really fantastic marriage and great communication so I just wanted to highlight it. 
All right, in July, I had two favorites. One was Elf and Night by Nalini Singh. This is just because I utterly adore the Psy Changeling slash Psy Trinity series. And I could not include this. I was super excited because this is the first book where we have a female alpha character. And I really, really enjoyed this. I hope we get more female alpha characters because that's fun. And also American Queen by Sierra Simone, just because this book is completely wild. It is a Arthurian retelling. It is sort of a dark romance story. It is a menage. It features a relationship between the president of the United States, his wife, and his best friend, who is also the vice president. Not for the faint of heart, but really, really good. And my special mentions for the month were Network Effect by Martha Wells, which is the fifth and full length novel in the Murderbot Diaries series, and also Star Wars Resistance Reborn. I have to highlight this because this is one of the very few Star Wars books that have been released recently outside of the Thrawn series that I did really enjoy. And this one does feature Poe quite heavily, and maybe that has something to do with it. In August, I had three books that I really enjoyed. The first one I don't have here because I've lent it out to a friend, and that is The Survivors by Jane Harper. This was her newest release in 2020. It is another Australian crime mystery story that takes place along the Tasmanian coast and follows two stories, one of a present day murder and also an ongoing mystery about what happened to a girl in this town, I think 10 or so years earlier. I also loved Emerald Blaze by Alona Andrews because I adore the Hidden Legacy series. Catalina's stories are my absolute favorite. Once you start reading them, you sort of have to binge all of them. And this one really developed Catalina and Alessandro's relationship, which is what I was there for. I am so sad that I have to wait a whole year and a bit for the next book. And also None Shall Sleep by Ellie Marnie, which is a young adult Australian crime thriller story. This one is also a bit historical because it is set in the early 1980s and it follows two teens who are recruited by the FBI to interview a teenage serial killer. I had two favorites in September. The first one was Take a Hint Danny Brown by Talia Hibbert. This is the second book in the Brown Sisters series and it follows the relationship between Danny Brown and Zafir. The two work in the same building. Danny is a lecturer and Zafir is a security guard and they've known each other for ages and then one day there's a fire drill and Danny gets stuck in the lift and Zafir rescues her. It's captured on social media and suddenly they become sort of social media darlings and they play this to their advantage with a fake relationship in order to support the work that Zafir is doing in working with boys and teen boys really around emotional resilience. So I really liked that one. And I also really liked Don't Hex and Drive by Juliet Cross, which is the sequel to Wolf Gone Wild, or really it's a companion. It follows a family of sisters. And this one features the relationship between Isadora, who is a witch, and Devraj, who is a vampire. And it was great. My special mentions this month were The Roommate by Rosie Dannon, which I really enjoyed. I know it sort of got mixed reviews, but I really enjoyed it. That is a contemporary romance. And also Future Girl by Asphyxia, which is an Australian young adult book. The author and the main character of the story are both deaf. And this book is told in an art journal style and it deals with what happens if we don't look after our environment and we use all our natural resources. In October, I really enjoyed Tools of Engagement by Tessa Bailey. It is the third and final book in the Hot and Hammered series and it features a age gap romance. I don't know why I enjoyed this one so much, I just did. It's not perfect by any stretch, but from the month, it was just one of those standout ones, possibly because it was just fun. And my special mention was The Beautiful by Renee Ardier, mostly because I was expecting to actually not like this. This is a young adult paranormal stories featuring monsters slash vampires, and I'd heard mixed reviews, but I actually really enjoyed the atmosphere that this one brought to it. So this was my special mention. In November, my two top books were Wolf Song and Raven Song by TJ Klune, the first two books in the Green Creek series, which follows a family of wolf shifters who move back to the town of Green Creek and cross paths with Ox, who is a teen boy who lives in the town with his mother and inexplicably drawn into the world of the Bennett shifters. And there is a big overarching plot, but it was delightful. And then Ravensong picks up where that's left off. And Ravensong is a second chance romance between two of the characters from the first book. And my special mention for November was Deal with the Demon by Chase Verity, which is a really cute, short, paranormal romance novella that doesn't look like it would be a ton of cuteness, but absolutely is because it is about a single mum who ends up accidentally hiring a demon to help her basically look after her kids and run her house so that she can find a job and support herself. 
And in December, I really loved Archangel Sun by Nalini Singh. It was just nice being back in the Guild Hunters world. And this one follows sort of these periphery characters that we've had for a while and really unpacks them. And this was just sort of a nice sidestep from all of the big action that's been happening recently in the series. And then because I read the rest of the Grand Creek series, I have to include Heart Song and Brother Song in here because they were utterly adorable books, but I can't talk about them too much because spoilers. And my special mention for December was Nine Rules to Break When Romancing a Rake by Sarah McLean because I utterly adored this book. It was just so much fun and I've really started to get into historical romances, so I had to include it. So those are my best books of 2020, plus all of my special mentions. So hopefully there's something in there that has intrigued you. I will include a list of all of the books mentioned in the description down below. Feel free to talk to me in the comments about them. Let me know if you have read and enjoyed any these maybe you have a difference of opinion to me and that's totally fine otherwise I hope that wherever you are in the world you are staying safe and healthy and I'll see you very soon in my next video thanks so much for watching bye everyone